Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Burgess, and this channel is uh, Tranquility in Art, as you can see from the from the name. I've got my camera focused on this painting that I did yesterday, and um, it was done using this 35 millimeter Hake brush or the Hake brush, some people like to call it. It's by a company called um, Montmartre. Let's uh, focus in on that. It's by a company called Montmartre. And I mean, I have to say that it's it's not it's not easiest brush to use. Um, just getting that chiseled edge is really really difficult. And what I really wanted to do to do was to paint this picture. I mean, I'm not entirely happy with it because um, I think since I'm not really used to using the hake brush, it was very very hard to get these um, these trees done. I mean, a lot of the time, what you can do is get a chiseled edge right here. If you put it in water and then start mixing on on a special palette you ought to be able to get a chiseled or straight enough edge so you can just basically go like that with the end of the chisel and you get straight lines i mean this is not the best i would say it's not and you can also um if you turn the brush over whilst it's wet on its side like that you ought to be able to do the distant foliage or even bigger foliage here um, I didn't manage to succeed because I couldn't get that chiseled edge and um, what I'm going to do today in, in another video in my next video is to do a similar painting as this one but not quite similar and uh, try to get that chiseled edge I mean I may not be able to to be honest with you I don't know what it is it's it's I mean uh, people say a lot of the time that um a bad workman blames its tools and um well i mean could i blame the tool i don't know i mean or am i, the, am I just not very good at this so it's hard to say i mean there are hake brushes there are variety of high hake brushes and some have um very thin thin uh thin bush, bush hair hairs here this seemed very bushy to me and i cut some of it down and I think the length is just too long, and I'm wondering whether I should trim it off. I don't know. I don't know. But um, this is the painting that I did, and it's um, it's a bit of a mess, if you ask me. But um, and this is the bit that um, this is the bit that I actually uh, didn't record because it was turning into a complete mess. So I did focus on on the sky, on the sky here, just right there. I did focus on the sky and the birds. And the distant trees, which were, you know, very distant in the back. And I did try to do use the chiseled edge of that brush to paint these these trees. But I eventually switched to a rigger, uh, which worked a lot better for the tiny branches in the end here. Just the very, very, very tiny branches. And I do want to show you the palette that the palette that tends to be used for using the hake brush simply because you need enough space to to mix and i'm going to show you that now so let's move over to the left here and um this is a a, um, a tray that i found in daiso and the idea is that you put your colors on around the edges and use the center for mixing but it's also important not to not to get um, too much water into it because these brushes drink up a lot of water and you will find that um, even dipping the end of it into a little bit of water, you end up with the whole thing simply, simply soaked. So um, I, I usually spritz this a little bit. But the whole point is it becomes very difficult. I mean, the, the brush is wet, you wipe some of it off, and then you try and get some of that going here like that, and then do this back and forth, back and forth motion until you get this flat. This is the part that I'm having trouble getting done the flat bit but you know I mean this video will show you that it was a bit of a disaster and I don't mind showing you a disaster because you know a lot of um, paint work can be and a lot of artists do have a lot of disastrous um, painting sessions and I thought you know there's no shame in showing it to you and there's no harm in showing it to you and I think you might just see that if you're struggling with this kind of brush a lot of people are, unless they've been at it and at it and at it. I mean, there are a lot of artists who do some really good work. So let's get back to this painting, sorry. And uh, uh, that this is what we're going to paint for today's session. Let me just. Uh, this is what we're going to paint for today's session. And uh, 
well, it'll be again a sort of a time lapse thing, so you don't have to watch every single brush stroke. And um, I hope you enjoy it. So let's get to it then. After wetting down the sky, I put in a very watery wash of yellow ochre, followed by ultramarine blue and some crimson alizarin. But as you'll see very shortly, I think I went overboard with the colours in the sky. I guess if one is trying to use the hake after such a long time, one will do that. The sky just started looking cluttered at this stage. Then adding the Payne's Grey to the mix, I think was a mistake. The sky started looking overdone. When the Payne's Grey started to merge with the rest of the colours, the sky started to lose definition. Part of the difficulty is the water control, you see. The hake soaks up so much water that the Payne's Grey was as watery as the rest of the sky. If the Payne's Grey had been more concentrated, that's with less water, I think its addition could have given the sky a nice dramatic look. Getting that chiselled edge was impossible, unless I used more water, which I didn't want to do. Unfortunately, the less water I used, the more the hairs split and splayed out. This was especially apparent when trying to paint in the tree trunks that ended up looking jagged.
you know, at this stage, I think I ought to be up front and tell you that when I started painting the foreground, I decided to turn off the camera because I wasn't pleased with how the painting was coming along. The foreground started looking messy because all the colours had almost the same tone, that's dark. I was reluctant to add water to my brush in case the foreground got flooded and everything just merged into one big mess, more of a mess than it actually was. You'll see what I mean in a minute, what, I, what, I, what I'm referring to. Thanks for watching. And do consider subscribing if you enjoyed watching me paint this mess for the first time. I think I'm going to try it again, and I will keep trying in future videos. So if you want to see how I improve on, on using the Hake brush, do consider giving me a subscription. Thanks for watching again. Thank you.